Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Labrik. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a letter from the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah, concerning the deep rooted fraternal relations between the two countries. The letter expresses the thanks and appreciation of the Kuwaiti Emir and people for the historic stance of the kingdom and its people in respect of Kuwait's 30th liberation anniversary, which reflects the bonds of brotherhood and close independent or interdependent between the two countries. The letter was delivered to His Majesty by the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Kuwait. Sheikh Dr. Ahmed Nasr Al Muhammad Al Subah during his reception. The Foreign Affairs Minister conveyed to His Majesty the greetings of the Emir of Kuwait and his wishes of further progress and development for the kingdom and its people. His Majesty requested the Minister to convey his greetings and wishes for abundant health and happiness to the Emir of Kuwait and to the people of Kuwait for further progress and prosperity. His Majesty expressed his pride in the deep-rooted historic relations between the two countries. For his part, the Kuwaiti minister expressed a thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the honorable stances of the Kingdom Towers, the brotherly state of Kuwait. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today received the Ambassador of the Russian Federation to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Igor Kremnev, at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness noted that growing bilateral ties have created new avenues for cooperation, particularly in relations to COVID-19 vaccination and mitigation efforts. For his part, the Russian Ambassador expressed his appreciation for the support His Royal Highness has extended to enhancing bilateral relations. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the victories of Paris FC under the slogan Victorious Bahrain promote the name of the kingdom in international championships. His Highness praised the victory of the team with two goals to nil in the 27th week of the French League. He expressed pride in the team and emphasized his support for Paris FC to continue making more achievements. His Highness wished the team success in his upcoming match against Dunkirk FC. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, headed the council's meeting virtually, which discussed a report on the reserve fund for future generations of the previous financial year. The council approved the annual report after it was reviewed by the relevant committees. It then approved other reports to amend the regulations on the salaries and benefits of retired military and security personnel. The council also discussed a recommendation to establish a reconciliation center for conflicts in sports. The president of the Sustainable Energy Authority, Dr. Abdel Hussein Mirza, shared a virtual meeting with the head of the Saudi-German Coordination Council for Economic Affairs, Shirin Vakosta, along with the representative of German Industrial and Commercial Affairs, Dalia Samira Rohit. Also during the meeting, the latest achievements in the field of sustainable energy were discussed, along with investment opportunities that are available for German companies in this field, including exchange of expertise, generation of solar and wind in energy and recycling waste. For their part, the participating delegation praised the progress that Bahrain has been making in the field of renewable energy and expressed strong interest in further cooperating with the Sustainable Energy Authority to achieve comprehensive development in the field. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, met today with the Yemeni Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates, Dr. Ahmed Awad bin Mbarak, who is on an official visit to the kingdom as part of his tour of the GCC. Dr. Al Zayani praised the deep rooted relations between the two friendly countries and their continuous development in all fields. He affirmed the kingdom's keenness on bolstering cooperation with Yemen at all levels to achieve joint aspirations and interests and reinforce the region's security and stability. Dr. Al Zayani expressed the kingdom's solid 
solidarity with the Yemeni government in its efforts to restore legitimacy and liberate Yemeni land from terrorist Houthi militias, defend Yemen's sovereignty and supreme, or supreme interests, restore security and stability, and counter foreign interventions in, in the internal affairs. The minister praised the efforts of Saudi Arabia in implementing the Riyadh agreement between the Yemeni government and the Southern Transitional Council. He expressed the kingdom's aspirations for Yemen to enjoy stability, security, and prosperity. For his part, the Yemeni foreign affairs minister expressed pleasure to visit the kingdom, underscoring the historical fraternal relations between the two countries and their people based on mutual respect and appreciation. He hailed the kingdom's supportive stance of Yemen and its effective participation in the Arab coalition to support legitimacy in addition to the support and assistance it provides through the Royal Humanitarian Foundation and its outstanding efforts to enhance security and peace in the region. He also highlighted the honorable stance of the GCC Towers Yemen in support of the Yemeni people's cause against the terrorist Iran-backed Houthi militias. He wished the Kingdom of Bahrain further progress and prosperity. During the meeting, means of bolstering bilateral relations at various levels were discussed, as well as the latest political and security updates in Yemen. In addition to the efforts of the UN to reach a political peace solution for Yemen, the latest Arab and regional developments in addition to topics of common interest were also discussed. Yemeni Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates Dr. Ahmed Awad bin Mbarak arrived in Bahrain yesterday evening on a visit to the kingdom as part of his tour in the GCC countries. He was welcomed at Bahrain International Airport by the Minister of Foreign Affairs Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani, the Ambassador of the Republic of Yemen to the Kingdom of Bahrain Dr. Ali Hassan Al Ahmadi and senior officials in the ministry. The Minister of Housing, Basim Al Hamar, in cooperation with the Information and Government Authority, launched five new electronic services. As part of the first phase of the electronic transmission plan for the Ministry, the five services include housing applications, housing request inquiries, updating contact and bank account information, Mazaya applications, and financing requests. All services may be accessed through the national e government portal www.bahrain.bh. The launch was held remotely in the presence of the CEO of the Information E-Government Authority, Muhammad Ali Al-Qaid, in addition to a number of officials from the Authority and the Ministry of Housing. The new services launched are in line with the vision of His Majesty the King to utilize modern technologies in various service areas to facilitate procedures for customers by developing and providing various electronic housing services. This step rationalizes expenditures and keeps pace with the requirements of the current conditions imposed by the coronavirus pandemic. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs condemned the terrorist act of a ballistic missile fired by the Houthi terrorist group towers Riyadh, as well as explosive traps towers Jazan and Khamis Amshet in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The ministry affirms its firm stance towards Saudi Arabia and its full support towers all measures taken towards these attacks, which are a clear violation to the international humanitarian law. The ministry hailed the capabilities of the forces supporting the legitimacy of Yemen, in which they were able to intercept and destroy the missile and traps. The ministry called on the international community to assume its responsibilities towards these attacks. The inspection department at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism held an awareness campaign for food trucks at Jafir and Al Saya in cooperation with a number of bodies concerned. The Assistant Undersecretary for Inspection and Resources, Abdelaziz Al Ashraf, said that the ministry coordinated with government bodies to hold inspection visits across the kingdom in order to ensure the safety precautions taken by food truck owners. He added that this campaign was held in cooperation with eight government bodies to inspect more than 130 trucks in order to spread awareness and ensure that owners are following precautions. Al Ashraf called on all owners to use this opportunity to follow the legal procedures and instructions for their activities. In a step that adds to the Kingdom of Bahrain's excellence in education, the University of Bahrain, UOB, has started issuing digital badges to its students in a first in the Kingdom of Bahrain, making it among a few in the regions to have issued students digital badges. The UOB English Language Center has issued digital badges to a first batch of 212 students who have completed the micro-credential program in cooperation with Shebaka Productions. To speak more about this, we are joined by the director of the English Language Center, Dr. Ghada Al-Jassim. Welcome to the news, Dr. Ghada. 
Hello and good evening. Good evening. Can you please tell us about the digital badges and what they mean for the students? Uh, first of all, thank you for hosting me this evening to highlight the University of Bahrain's great achievement on issuing the first uh, digital badges in the kingdom. Uh, let me start by saying uh, what those digital badges are. Um, these are uh, actually a, a simply a, a visual representation of competency-based micro-credentials. So uh, they are indicators of achievements and indicators of the mastery of the skills. Uh, they are packed up with metadata that includes um, information about the issuer, uh, the individual who received the badge, the criteria to earn it, and evidence that the criteria have been fulfilled. Well, a great thing about it is that uh, they travel with the earner and they can be uh, shared on social media, LinkedIn, added to email signatures, and most importantly, uh, displayed on uh, CVs. Uh, this feature makes it uh, easy for stakeholders, let's say employers and other educators, to verify those badges instantly as compared to the uh, traditional paper certification. That's amazing. And, yeah, and uh, what is important about those for students is that uh, they can take their credentials with them wherever they go building a rich e-portfolio for uh, their lifelong learning and achievement journey. So let's say, for example, a student wants to start a new job and wants to communicate that he or she masters certain skills, uh, for example, coding or problem-solving skills. Um, with the digital, uh, digital badge, uh, he can share evidence of his competencies with the employers who can easily verify the mastery of these skills. And in the English Language Center, we introduced a micro-credential program to our students that focuses on employability and lifelong skills. 212 uh, students completed the program, and upon the completion of this program, they received digital badges as a proof of mastering their um, skills. Right. I mean, you might have answered it a little bit, but if we need a, a little bit more emphasis on how does such a move actually reflect the effort of the University of Bahrain uh, in keeping up with the digital development? Uh, well, uh, the digitalization in education is a strong trend, especially with the te technological disruption um, in terms of uh, using different means to facilitate business processes, uh, partnerships and interaction leading to the creation of complex networks. Uh, in recent years, uh, we've noticed that some um, elite universities across the world have started adopting the digitalization phenomenon in different fields of implementation. Um, and the University of Bahrain as a leading institution in the kingdom and as a well-reputable institution in the region has taken solid steps uh, through the transformational plan to be responsive to changes in education and technology. Um, those digital badges are becoming the new global currency, and they are likely here to stay. Um, and by issuing these badges, the University of Bahrain ranks among the top universities in the region that pursue the implementation of a successful digital transformation. But actually, we are proud that uh, we are the first higher education institution in the kingdom to issue digital badges and among the few in the region which adopted this means of digitalization. Yes, thank you very much for answering our questions. That was English Language Center Director, Dr. Ghad al Jassim. Thank you for being with us. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 2,379 2, had taken the vaccine yesterday, bringing the total number of vaccinated individuals to 295,296. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 6,862 with 673 recoveries, 651 registered new cases and four deaths. 229 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 410 are contacts of active cases and 12 are travel related. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.